Hello! This video is about practicing and preparing your scales for the Houston Youth Symphony auditions. And I've put in a bunch of advice here for anyone, whether you are preparing for your debut string orchestra audition, all the way up to a symphony viola audition. So hopefully everyone can learn a little bit of something from this video. And as I always like to make a disclaimer, these are my ideas as a teacher and uh, always defer to your own teacher for guidance on things like fingerings and playing styles and that sort of thing. Uh, it says this in the guidelines, but when you play your scales for your audition, you're allowed to now choose your scales because they are an online audition and harder scales will be uh, you will be given a, a higher score for, but as with anything, a well-played scale, no matter what the scale is, is the best route to go when you're choosing your scale. So I wanted to start off with talking with you about if you are in a, a position to be applying and auditioning for the debut string orchestra, one of the requirements to be in this orchestra is proficiency in first second and third positions. And the scales that you have to prepare for this, most of them we could probably play in first with a little shift to third position, but if you can, please show us in your audition that you are able to shift. It would be great to at least have one scale that you play for your audition so we can see your shifting abilities and your shifting skills. So, one of my favorite ways to practice scales, let me back up, the most important thing before you practice scales or practice or take your audition in general is to make sure you have tuned your instrument to the best of your ability. Whether that's with a tuning app that you have or if you can go on YouTube and you can type in A440 into the search bar and there's many videos droning an A that you can tune your viola to. Speaking of drone, that was my first uh, bit of advice, was to choose uh, the starting pitch of whatever scale you are practicing at the moment and to slowly play your scale with that drone. So for example, if I wanted to practice my C, oh, let, let me do a D major scale here. So I have my drone on and I'm gonna practice really slowly making sure that all my notes are in tune with that D. And so on and so forth, we'll pretend I played a three octave scale. So that kind of really close listening is really helpful when you first start warming up for the day. It can put not only our fingers in a good position, but it can put our minds and our hearts and souls in, in a good place. It's almost like um, viola meditation or viola yoga to do something slowly with a drone. But you don't wanna play your scales too slowly for your audition. So I would also recommend practicing with a drone faster as you improve your scales. So something I like to, I have a special name for, for this practice technique and it's called stepping stones. And the reason why I call it stepping stones is because I want you to imagine that there's a beautiful river running right across uh, your path and there are some stepping stones dotting across the river, how we'll get from the beginning of the scale to the end of the scale. And as you step onto the first stepping stone, you test and you see, oh, is this steady? Am I going to fall into the water? Is it going to hold my weight? Yes, okay, it's good. And then you take the next step with your next foot. But if it doesn't feel steady or you didn't quite get your balance, you go back to the stone that you previously had your foot on. So with that metaphor in mind, that is one way that I encourage anyone to practice their scales. And using a drone would be a great way to do that, but I'll leave the drone off for now. So um, an example of a stepping stone with a drone would sound like this. And I'm gonna purposely get this out of tune. back and forth. 
forth to keep testing it. Now I'm going to keep going. And that can be a really, really helpful way because then you can really train yourself to get the pitch the very first time because we certainly don't want to keep practicing adjusting. We want to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until we can reliably get the pitch in tune. Again, I cannot reiterate enough. We don't want to practice constantly adjusting. And if you're feeling out of sorts and it's just not uh, a good scale day for you, turn off the drone, take a step back from the scales and maybe practice an excerpt or something else and then go back and do the scales. Because although music is basically a bunch of scales all mixed up, uh, playing a scale reliably well and also for something like an audition is also a very special skill and it's a muscle that we have to um, we have to exercise for sure so again let's reiterate we want to practice with a drone and we also want to practice using stepping stones now the way that I demonstrated for you was a pretty slow stepping stones and that's okay and I encourage you to use stepping stones in your solos and in your excerpts as well but stepping stones can also be useful for those of you who are choosing scales that are three octaves and maybe way up high on the a string I would encourage you just to stick in that top octave maybe with a drone or without a drone and do your stepping stones back and forth and back and forth because there are as many different sized violas as there are violists in the world and we uh, just really playing up high on the viola can be uh, as much about feeling comfortable doing it as it is about just playing in tune which is the obvious thing but but stepping stones will also just give you a chance to really uh, commit to muscle memory the placement of those notes. So stepping stones, one of my favorite ways to practice. And we and it gives us the opportunity to go back and forth between a note or two to really make sure that we we can reliably play it in tune every time. Now, another way that I encourage you to practice, I feel like I'm always telling people to practice things in different rhythms, which is an idea that have been passed to me by many teachers of my own. But the kind of rhythms that I would encourage you to practice your scales with are just really simple, sustained rhythms. Like for instance, constant 16th notes. <laughs> give you a chance to uh, not only just get your mind out of oh my gosh playing th playing these skills so slow to begin with but it will also help your reaction time maybe getting to a note after you are have been playing a rhythm for a long time and, and changing it to the to the next pitch and that is also very good for your brain and building your uh, the and, and building, excuse me, your confidence with getting to the next note in tune. And this can be done uh, with your two octave scales that you're working on in debut string orchestra, again, all the way up to your three octave scales that you are doing for the, the symphony orchestra audition. So sustained rhythms or just making up rhythms, that can also uh, make practicing more fun for sure. And even though looking through here the the audition requirements um the debut string orchestra says to use separate bows but i don't see any other requirements as far as bowings go for the rest of the orchestras and so feel free to use whatever bowing pattern that you and your teacher are working on whether it's slurring triplets or slurring uh 16th notes slurring three to a bow two to a bow uh any any of those are just as applicable uh to to this audition and playing the scales as just doing a nice flowing separate bow scale okay so even though you get to choose your scale, I just wanted to say that this would be a great opportunity, even though you're choosing your scales, to 
maybe surprise yourself when you practice and have a little jar where you've written all the scales that you're supposed to play um, and draw those out of a hat and maybe choose you know, three or four scales a day uh, or whatever that you have time with, but just try to surprise yourself and and see what scales that you that you may remember or that you didn't think that you that you could could know. I always tell my students, even if you act, are playing a scale and you accidentally, you know, start doing the wrong fingering, try to keep going. Now, the beauty of making your audition tape is, is that you can uh, make your audition uh, the, the best showing possible of yourself, but this is also a great opportunity to really practice and prepare your scales for hopefully next year for a live audition when you won't know what scales you're going to be asked. So, Thank you for listening, and I want to again reiterate that it's really important to make sure that your instrument, above all else, is very in tune, that you have tuned it before you start practicing your scales, that you take your scales very seriously. It is something that is going to solidify the relationship between you and your viola. It is a great opportunity to, to, treat, um, to treat it like a meditation between you and your instrument and really learning the fingerboard up and down because as you work on harder and harder repertoire that scale knowledge will really really come in good use to you so we are going to practice with drones we are going to also hopefully add in the idea of stepping stones into our practice habits and I wanted to say too that a stepping stone can also, if, you, if you're feeling brave and you want to try it, we can do it with different characters and such too. We also can practice with sustained rhythms or different rhythms to kind of shake up things and surprise our left hand a little bit. And also we're going to take this time to practice more scales than just the two scales that we've chosen for our, our audition. So thank you so much for listening and happy practicing your scales. Scales are the, the bread and butter of our string instrument playing. So happy practicing.